during the Vietnam War, he was a, just a kid and just a kid, 19 years old, drank a lot. He wanted to be strong and he, he, he was probably had fears like anyone else. And he didn't want anyone. He didn't want the fears. He certainly tried to battle his fears and he probably had lots of them. And ultimately he, he felt like he was on the losing end. So he drank a lot to be brave, can courage kind of, you know, like always being kind of on drugs or alcohol to kind of keep him so he could maintain some kind of persona of badassness and just like be numb to, to everything. So he, he, he was able through using the drugs and alcohol, uh, he was able to make himself have a persona of like a fearless person, a fearless warrior, but truly he, it was the alcohol drinking constantly that, that basically gave him the ability to, to, to try to pull it off when he was sober he, he would be the, the scared little kid waking up and he'd have to have that drink right away. And ultimately he was ashamed of himself for that. He'd never really want to admit that like, it's the alcohol that makes me brave. It's the alcohol that gives me this heroic ability. It's more like a crazy, stupid fearlessness, which is just numb, numbed up. It can't feel fear. It's drunk. It's drunk. And this is brave. And so it just has to continue to drink. He's young. He's young. He could do it every day. So he, he has, he's, a, he's basically drinking constantly, doing drugs constantly, and he's, he fights with his sister. That's a big thing, fighting with his sister. Uh, all of his life, he was a competitor fighting with his sister. It was like she was his enemy. And ultimately, it was always like she's getting him in trouble, telling on him, you know, like he's always, you know, don't tell her what he's doing. You know, his sister and him were, she was his nemesis. And ultimately, they loved each other and hated each other. And so he, he would, at 19 years old, go to Vietnam. Go to Vietnam and try to play a role, which he really couldn't do that good. But he was determined to do it and make it look good. So he, he ultimately appeared to be doing it very well. And ultimately, he could do it in, in some sense. But the alcohol got the best of him so much that... You know, you, you can't really be drunk all the time and, and think you're not going to be making all kinds of mistakes and people are going to look down on you. And yeah, you do a lot of stupid shit drunk and understand that there's a high price to pay for, for, for having to use alcohol to personify your fearlessness because everything you do when you're drinking will be a lot of mistakes. So your fearlessness carries a high price. He would be in Vietnam. And when he, when he got there, he was, he turned out to be, he was a kid, right? So he was assigned to helicopter, the Huey helicopter, the cavalry units, which were, which were the helicopter wars. So he got thrown into, to them as just a kid that was basically, yeah, whatever they tell me to do, I'm just this kid. Everyone, little kid is literally a boy and he's, he's like 19 years old. He's in Vietnam in combat and everybody's bigger and older than and, and outranks him so basically he's like the, the the kid who's being told and ordered around and people like will give him shit and ultimately he learns how to fit in he becomes the driver a combat driver at first he becomes a combat driver and he's driving a commander around he gets lucky enough because he's a kid that, that the the base commander uh actually picks him out uh, because he notices he can drive pretty good. And so for a kid, he's a good driver. And so he g takes courses in combat driving and basically learns how to drive in a combat environment. And then he's, he's driving the commander around. So in, in, when he first gets to Vietnam, he's driving the commander around, literally in war zone, in the war zones. And literally in the dangerous war zones, he's driving around the and he's scared. He's scared, but he's got the commander with him. And the commander is fearless. The commander is the, the, the dad who, who is fearless, plays the fearless role. You know, the commander, you know, I'm in charge. Hey, boy, make sure you drive. Drive good. You know, like ultimately, like the commander doesn't fear death. The commander doesn't recognize that he'll die, but he knows he'll never die. He'll always win. And, and he's, he, yeah, he doesn't accept that anything might be his end. The commander is so confident that he has his kid driving him around, who's actually a very good combat driver. For a kid, he can he can drive. He can drive. And ultimately, 
because of his ability to drive exceptionally, he becomes the, the driver for the commander. And so he's doing that for the first for a long time. So he gets to drink. Everyone he's not in that much danger because he's basically well, it's not it's, it is dangerous. He's he's in the in a war zone, but the reality is he's 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 driving a vehicle and he's got the commander, which means that you know they're they're taking big steps to make sure the commander doesn't get killed. So he's basically protected on some level, as the commander with him will be protected on some level. They can't risk that commander. For, they've got you know bodyguards and, and people protecting him. So ultimately he's pretty safe. And why he while he's doing this, he gets drunk. He gets he gets his act together. He starts getting used to to his combat role in Vietnam. The driver driving the commander around, and he feels important. And the commander and him form a relationship. Why why he's doing it? He's the he's the kid who who has to pretend he's brave and show a brave face. And ultimately, he he's he's getting he's getting trained by the commander to to be a soldier. So basically commander is teaching him how to be strong and brave and ultimately he's learning how to be a soldier in a combat environment and it's working you know it seems to be working the relationship between him and the commander is kind of like yeah it's it's a good relationship he's happy for being in a war zone he's like he's 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 basically safe being the driver of the commander safer than a lot of other anything else he could be doing and like flying in helicopters or 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 what he becomes to actually do next where it's literally as the most dangerous of all. So he's driving around in his former relationship with the commander. And as he learns how to be strong and willful uh, in his ability to carry himself as a soldier, he starts to upbraid the commander once in a while. And ultimately there becomes a tension between him and the commander as he becomes more confident driving that commander around. They become to know each other somewhat. He starts to be a little bold and also disrespectful to the commander. Like, yeah, he's not showing respect or he's starting to be too comfortable around that commander. And ultimately, the commander's feeling disrespected because he basically starts to slack on what his respect and showing his uh, his kind of yeah duty bound. He, he, he's drinking. You know, the commander knows he's been drinking. He, he's driving dr- drunk. And ultimately, the commander starts to, to be unhappy with him and he doesn't care because whatever so he's just being like kind of a rebellious 19 year old kid saying whatever you know i i want to drink and ultimately so he gets fired he gets fired he can't drive the commander around anymore commander says you know you're fired you're gonna you'll be we'll sign you somewhere else so that, so real soon he's a helicopter door gunner so if he goes from driving the the, the commander around as a combat driver to being assigned to a huey copter uh huey the, the Huey helicopter that he, he gets assigned as a door gunner. Now understand that the door gunners have a two week lifespan. So understand depending on where you are, door gunners didn't last a, but a couple of weeks. I mean, they were always getting shot when you're standing in the, in the helicopter on the, in the door, it, it, it is a place where they'll shoot you. Uh, and the door gunners had about two weeks before they were shot up and dead or in the hospital and replaced. They were always being replaced because they're always being shot up in the Vietnam war, 11,000, Helicopters were lost. 11,000 of them went down. A lot of people died. And so he, he is ultimately now a door gunner because, yeah, the commander wasn't too happy with him. And so they, they put him in a dangerous place. Ultimately, he disrespected some high officials. Just a kid being kind of stupid, drinking too much, kind of like whatever, you know, just immature, tough guy, drinking, doing breaking the rules, disrespecting his superior superiors. It, it it got him into a, one of the most dangerous assignments as a helicopter door gunner on the Healy in a, in a heavy combat zone. He, he, went from, he went from being pretty safe to now utterly guaranteed not to last long unless he's hella lucky. I guess they would have said he asked for it, literally. Maybe he did. But ultimately, he got even more embittered, now flying around the helicopter as a door gunner, and had to drink more alcohol because now he's more afraid and ultimately yeah he's still trying to say he's not afraid he's fighting his fears he's just a kid and ultimately he's trying to be fearless and so he has to increase his drinking tenfold to like be able to even handle it and so he can only pull it off because he's constantly drunk in the combat environment drinking 24 hours a day and doing drugs so he he, he's able to that's how he copes with it he is literally a door gunner for a while and almost gets shot up so many times. The, the helicopter he's in gets shot up so much. It manages to make it base. It crashes many times, crashed 
So he got in many crashes that were at low altitude and ultimately or emergency landings, a couple of bad crashes, which, which weren't that bad. But ultimately, the copter had to land immediately because it was going down anyways. And so it would be like a hard ass landing. He went through a couple of those where they could have easily died. The copter got smashed to pieces and rolled, but basically they climbed all out. They were all okay. It wasn't that bad. We made it. <laughs> that was Harry. You know, we just crashed. Like he went down a couple times like that. He got used to it. More alcohol. Wow, I survived two copter crashes. Two copter crashes he survived. And ultimately, he's now he's, he's getting confident in the third helicopter. And now he's more brave, drinking more. And now he's feeling like, yeah, I, you know, I can do this. You know, I'm not going to die. And I'm, yeah, I'm so drunk anyways, I don't care. Ultimately, now he's, he's trying to, his attitude becomes kind of, I don't know, beyond repair. It becomes like stupid. Tough guy, stupid John Wayne antics. And he's just a, that, that drunken door gunner that is literally always loaded and firing on everything. He shoots at villages and probably kills many people because he's drunk. So he shoots things when they, when they're, when they're out flying, he shoots things and he shoots at groups of people. Yeah. He doesn't care. He becomes something that God says that boy is pissing me off. He's shooting at innocent Vietnamese. Yeah. Because he's drunk flying around. I got to shoot at something. <laughs> yeah. That would have been what he would say. He was just being stupid and drunk. He didn't care. He was in a combat environment. He didn't think he was going to live anyways. He was pretty sure he's going to be dead. So he was like, does it, does it really freaking matter? And ultimately it did really matter. And he lost his ability to, to see his duty boundness to God and himself and his duty to be a good person and stay morally upright. He lost, he, he, he didn't think there was a need to do it, and he didn't realize how important it was that he didn't fail. That he had to not—he had to maintain some kind of some kind of humanity. But he he started to go below the the humanity and lose it. Just a, just a bad drunken man that was bitter and angry and shooting people, innocent people maybe sometimes just shooting at anybody. And ultimately, he gets picked off and why does he die well because god kills him does he know god's killing him did he know that the two crashes he got in were because god didn't kill him did he does he know that the two the two crashes he got in does he know does he know that god didn't let him die like he got lucky he thought he thought he got lucky no it wasn't luck god said i'm not killing you boy but you're gonna guess what you're gonna roll around in the dust but you want to see you want to crash you want to see what it's like I'll take you to the edge, boy. He didn't know. He thought he got lucky. He didn't think God had any part in it. But understand, God had him go down a couple times, and but protected him. And ultimately, the third time, he was just getting worse, more disrespectful, fighting with his sister. And he, fighting with his sister. While he was in Vietnam and his sisters in the United States, he, they were spiritually fighting. He was fighting the feminine collective, women in general, and disrespected Vietnamese women. Thought they were stupid all that dumb. He couldn't understand. He knew nothing. He wasn't even bad. He was a kid in a war zone, pushed into a place that was dangerous and hell bent. You can't really blame him except to say that he did the best he could, having no choice and put in the extreme danger. He coped with it somehow through drugs and alcohol and trying to be some version of a character, which just doesn't work and is not going to be acceptable by God or even men. The third time that he's, that he dies. This is part one. Find part two. This is going to continue.